<laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> so we're back. Can you help me figure out how to make that full screen again? Uh, hi guys, um, Denise Paxi here again. Uh, I, this is what the fourth week that we've been doing this, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're doing we're doing the thing. Uh, this is Dee. She's going to be uh, chatting with me today. We're uh, we're going to talk about what's in your makeup kit today. Not just what's in mine. We're going to see what's in yours. So um, we're going to be pulling out some of our products and we're going to see whether or not we're going to play a little game of keep or toss because um, at some point um, it's important for us to uh, decide. Actually, let's go over here for a second. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're having a couple of little teeny tiny little technical difficulties. Somehow I managed to make my screen super small. I'm going to figure it out. Um, <laughs> We think we're going to work in here somewhere. Anyway, uh, point being is we've got some stuff that we're going to go through. We're going to talk about a little bit about sanitation also, especially in this day and age right now when we've got viruses and things that are happening. We want to make sure that we are as prepared as we possibly can be um, to get our, uh, our products clean and uh, user-friendly for ourselves. If you're somebody who works on other people, uh, we also need to make sure that we're sanitized to use on multiple people at a time. I see some of my uh, fellow makeup artists in here. Hi, Gabe. I see you. I mean, I don't see your face, but I know you're here. <laughs> um, so let's just kind of jump in. If you guys have questions at any point, please just say so. Do you want to pause for a moment if there's anybody who wants to grab one of their makeup yeah, bags real quick? Yeah, great idea. Hands so on activity. if you guys uh, need to go get your makeup bag, go get it. Let's, let's start looking through our products and seeing what we're dealing with. Um, I think I start every class by talking about how it's important to make sure that you start with a nice clean canvas on your face. What do we always do? We're going to wash our face first and then we're going to moisturize. That is so important in this day and age. Uh, because we want to keep our skin nice and beautiful and lovely and all the things that come along with it. So that's number one important. Second thing we got to make sure that we're doing, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Um, we touch so many things during the day. It is ridiculous. I, I, don't, if, I don't know if you realize, I think probably more and more people are realizing today how much we actually touch. Um, we are super aware of it because we're having to wear our gloves and we're having to wear our masks. And how many times a day do you touch your face that you didn't realize? Holy cow, it's a lot. Um, we don't realize how much uh, bacteria is living on the surfaces of everything. So before I start working on anyone, including my own face, I always wash my hands. Washing your hands mm -hmm. is super important. Yes. Um, so second thing is make sure that your products are also nice and clean. So Dee, uh, we were having a little conversation the other day uh, about brushes and uh, she was like, you know, what kind of brushes do you use and, and what would I do for this or whatever? And I said, well, why don't you go get your brushes and then we'll see what you have and we'll see what we need to build on. Um, she brought to me, what were, what were your brushes in initially? I think. I think they were just in the cases, like not breathing. They were just uh -huh. stored in the cases. Like when you buy a set, I had them all just closed off in there, mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in the dark. <laughs> and, um, and when I pulled those brushes out and looked at them, did, what, what kind of state were they in? They were, uh, they were a sixth grade science experiment. <laughs> that, is, that is the state that they were in. <laughs> Now, um, I'm not going to tell you that I was horrified. You were horrified. <laughs> but I was kind of horrified. No, no it's think, okay. It's I okay. think the best part was, is you said, okay, where's your brush cleaner? And I said, what's that? <laughs> yeah, what's that? What's brush cleaner? Okay, so we're going to talk about that first. Do you still have your beauty blender too, by the way? No, I threw okay. it away. Okay. <laughs> so I gave it to Ben to use in his art supply. Oh no, just no, wait, you don't want to, wait, oh, okay. Here's scoop guys. Um, your tools need to be clean in addition to your products. All right. So what we need, what we need to do is make sure that we're cleaning our brushes, um, deep cleaning our brushes at least once a week. Um, I know that sounds like a lot, but uh, I clean my brushes after every person that I use them on. Uh, mostly because as a professional, I'm going from one person to the next person to the next person. P.S. Mm -hmm. by the way, I have a separate set of brushes for my clients and I have a separate set of brushes for myself. So I know that gets a little bit pricey, especially if you're working on other people, but that is part of building your business. But as a personal, for, for your personal use, 
I have still have a ton of brushes that I use in my kit um, that I do keep clean and I clean once a week. Um, after every client, I am, I am spot cleaning with a high, uh, high octane brush cleaner. Um, you can make your own brush cleaner, but let's talk about that real quick. So first and foremost, there are some really great products out there that you can use to clean your brushes um, from the get-go. Uh, the one, that, my favorite one is actually called, um, it's Monda. It's actually from Nigel, Nigel Beauty. They actually have their own line of products. This one's relatively inexpensive. This one, let's see, what's the price tag on this one? Mm, I do not see it. I don't see a price tag on this one. This is probably about 20 bucks. And this is uh, 16 ounces. Well, look at that. 16 ounces, you get old. Pull it back. <laughs> 16 ounces for about 20 bucks. Um, what's in it? That's kind of important to know. Uh, this particular one doesn't have the ingredients listed on here, but I can tell you that it has an alcohol base, um, a 70% alcohol base. Uh, when I make my own, it's actually from a recipe from Kevin James Bennett. I don't know if anybody is familiar with him. He's actually a very famous uh, makeup artist who um, has developed a lot of products. Um, he has his own uh, line of makeup brushes through Revolution. Um, he's a really well-known and he's a well-respected name in the business. Um, and he has a recipe on his website uh, for his uh, brush cleaner. And it is a, it's a mixture of 70% alcohol with a little bit of acetone um, and a little bit of 244 Dow fluid, uh, Corning Dow fluid. Um, and that's the, um, uh, what's the, what's the word that I was using for that? I wrote, I wrote down some notes so I wouldn't forget. Um, it's actually a solvent. So what it does is it dissolves anything that's kind of sticky uh, that could be in your makeup oh, brushes. You caked on there. Yeah, so anything that's kind of caked on there. Um, what's really important is that not only do you wash your brushes, but you got to condition them too because they're brushes, just like your hair, right? When you go and you wash your hair, mm -hmm. you're going to shampoo and then you're going to condition um, to keep your brushes in really good shape because those brushes are they're like touching your face. And I don't know about you guys, but have you ever had somebody go and do your makeup and it like the brush pokes you because it's sharp, that's because the brushes aren't being conditioned. So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna take a brush that I have been saving in here that needs to be washed. And we're going to wash and condition that super fast. So this one here, this is just like a little, a little like blending brush and it's got some powder on it. And so you can see, so the color of this brush is actually normally like a, like a golden yellow, but we've got some nice product kicked in there on purpose. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take um, a brush shampoo, which is something that I, that's, that's what I like to use to help condition my brushes. The one that I, is my favorite is this one, it's called Clean. And it's actually the name of the company is, I think it's London Brush Company. Oh, this one is uh, cleanbrushes.com. Um, and it's literally, it's a cake, of brush shampoo. And, and it so smells really good. this one is the lavender scent, which I'm all over because and it's actually an olive oil base. So it can it cleans and conditions your brushes at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I just got like this little, this little cup of water over here. I'm gonna dip the brush into the water and then I'm just gonna go right into the cake and I'm just gonna lather it up. Now, if you're like me and you've uh -huh. never done this before, uh -huh. this part of just swirling your brush on this is oddly satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> can you see? I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but like it the product is actually around. coming right yeah. out <laughs> into it. And so what you can do is then you can also take your fingers and actually like work that shampoo mm -hmm. into, into the brush so that you're getting it all nice in there. I would actually recommend when you're doing this to go on a downward motion. And here's the reason why is because, you know, a lot of people, they complain about their brushes falling apart. Do you know how, why they fall apart? Um, poorly made or poorly stored? Poorly made, poorly stored, poorly taken care of. But here's one of the things is that you can have like the best brush in the world, but if you don't take care of it, you're going to ruin it. So what ends up happening is when they make brushes, this is this part of the, the brush is called the ferrule, F-U-R-R-U-L-E. Ooh, vocabulary word. Is that similar to the use of, uh, the term used in a pencil? Where it's prim at the top? I digress. Continue. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so this is the ferrule of the brush. And what this does is the brushes are actually set inside here. They're crimped and they're also super, like you, they use a super strength glue to keep all the brushes in there nice and tight. And so when you're, when you're cleaning your brush, you want to be able to go, you, you want to clean everything, but we don't want moisture to get trapped 
inside the ferrule of the brush. So gravity is your friend. Let's use gravity as your friend. There are plenty of times when I, when I, when I'm cleaning my brushes that I will let them sit in a, in the, the brush cleaner, the, this one, the, the liquidy one. Um, but my brush cleaner is not full so that it's going up to here. My brush cleaner is usually only about to, to about this height inside my brush cleaning tank. Um, because I, when they're, they're soaking, because if there's something that's really, uh, really in there, um, if they're soaking in there, I don't want them to go all the way up through the ferrule and to ruin the ferrule and the handle of the brush. So anyway, so you can see that I have basically just kind of been massaging, massaging the uh, shampoo into it. And I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna just swirl it around in my little cup of water. And I'm gonna clean off my fingers while I'm at it. And then I'm gonna wipe it. I, you can't see me wiping. I'm literally doing this on a paper towel. And I'm using a paper towel on purpose, not a washcloth. Do you know why? Because washcloths sit around dirty and breed things just like our brushes do. Yep, little bacteria harbor. So we've now just cleaned our brush on a paper towel. And if you can see now, look at that lovely, pretty golden yellow color. It's like magic, guys. <laughs> brush shampoo, it is your friend. Now, in the event that you want to actually disinfect your brush, you can use the, uh, you can do a, a spray of 70% alcohol right over the top of it. Why 70%? Have you guys, especially right now, we've all, a lot of people have been talking about alcohol as a disinfectant, right? So um, there are many different percentages of alcohol that are out on the market right now. What, does anybody know which one we should be using? Uh, wait, psych, psych, is, psych is nodding her head. I see you. I see you. Anybody else? Anybody want to try to answer? 90%? I can't, I can't see our chat. I don't know what I did, but we made our chat go away, so I can't see any chat questions. I apologize. I see is one little tiny we see like a weird little tiny stripe. I, yeah. I don't see anybody raising their hand okay. yet. <laughs> All right. Is Fair it enough. The, is it the 90%? Uh, no. The one that we want to use is 70%. I was going to say 70 70, that's right. Okay, here's why. Because in hospitals, when you go get a shot and they do like the little thing with the cotton ball on your, on your arm, you, they use 70% alcohol. What that means is it's 70% actual real alcohol and 30% water. You'll see 90% out there. You'll see 99% out there. 70% is the best to use because it, is, because it takes longer to evaporate. Bacteria is a funny thing. Um, it likes to stick around. Um, it is very potent, um, and in order to actually kill the bacteria, you need to actually attack it a little longer than you think. So that's why, like, when you have your hand sanitizer, you smell that alcohol smell. That's what's killing the germs. It's the alcohol that's in it. The gel and the, like, the pretty sense of, like, the sweet pea or the strawberries or whatever the case may be, all of that, that's, that's just floof. The alcohol is what's killing it. Everything in your hand sanitizer, um, it's alcohol. So they use alcohol. It takes you, your hands get a little tacky for a minute because the gel stays on there. That's the alcohol it needs to stay, and you actually need to let it do its job by by letting it remain on the surface of your hands. Same thing with on the surface of all of your tools. Seventy percent means that it's going to take a little longer to evaporate. That thirty percent of water is what gives it that extra length of time. The ninety percent it's going to evaporate a lot quicker. And so what it does is the cell walls of the bacteria. They, it hits the cell walls, but it doesn't actually penetrate. It just kind of goes bing, and then it bounces off because it doesn't have enough time to actually get into the cell okay. and then to deteriorate the bacteria. So 70% is your friend. 70%. Okay. Um, the, the solutions of um, the, the homemade, um, the homemade uh, brush cleaner, gosh, guys, it's been a weird day. Uh, the homemade brush cleaner also has a little bit of acetone in it. That also helps dissolve some of the, uh, the yucky, picky, gross stuff that ends up in there. The, the bacteria is what gets killed by, uh, the bacteria gets killed by the alcohol, and then the acetone and the 244 fluid, those are the solvents that will, will help disintegrate all the stuff that's making it stick to all the, uh, the fibers in your brushes. Okay. So you mentioned a couple different homemade recipes. Yeah. But in an emergency type situation, if there's anybody out there like me who didn't have any brush cleaner and mm -hmm. it was necessary right then and there, mm -hmm. is there anything that we might have just sitting already in our shower or in our bathroom sink that we can use in a pinch to get things so that they're at least not still a sixth grade science experiment? Absolutely. Shampoo. 
Baby shampoo is the easiest, cheapest option. You can go get that Johnson's baby shampoo and it will, that will take everything out that you need it to. Just want to make sure you use a little bit of conditioner. Now, I wouldn't necessarily use like your, your fabulous conditioner for your colored hair or uh, one of those kinds of things. I would probably go with coconut oil or olive oil oh, okay. to, to condition the actual fibers of your brushes. A little goes a long way, guys. Do not soak, like go in and when you're, uh, when you're actually washing your brushes, you can, you, you'll use the, the shampoo, get it really in there, clean it, rinse it really well. And then by, by the way, when you guys are drying your brushes, you want to lay them flat. Don't, uh, we actually have, um, these are Dee's brushes. They are all nice and beautifully cleaned now oh. in our little, our little uh, poison apple bucket, <laughs> but they're all nice and pretty and clean. Um, but when you're laying your brush out, do not set them in the, uh, do not set them in your brush holder. We actually want to lay them flat on a paper towel, just like this. Is okay? there a specific reason for that? Is it related to that water damage going down that way? Absolutely. Okay. The other thing you want to do is, especially with, uh, some of your brushes that are like a little bit flatter, like you've got one here. She, this is one of her brushes here. It's a flat brush. You also want to make sure that you take a moment while it's still okay. wet to shape it so that it has the right shape. Because if we, if we let it, you know, if we crunch it up and let it dry, it's not going to have the shape that it was initially created to okay. be. So you want to make sure that you, you just take your fingers and you just, you don't, you don't have to go crazy. Just gently set it the way you want it to be and then lay it flat on your, um, on your paper towel and uh, give it, I don't know, probably about a half an hour or so to, to just let it dry the way it needs to mm -hmm. naturally. And that's really going to be a huge help. Okay, so yes, you can use the shampoo that's in your shower or you can go to the 99 cent store, get a little bottle of baby shampoo, good to go. Um, and then as far as conditioning, a little bit of olive oil is going to be your friend. Again, teeny tiny little bit, a little bit of olive oil. Just rub it in there. Just get a nice little conditioner on. Okay. Do you, how long do you need to wait for the, the oil or something like that to dry? I, I would do it like overnight. Okay. Just let it soak in a little bit. Obviously we don't want oily brushes. That's why I'm saying a lit, I mean, guys, like a tad, just take a little bit, just put it on your finger, not even a drop, maybe like half a drop and then just kind of work it into the brushes. Okay. okay. Awesome. So something else that we don't think about. So your morning routine. I don't know about you, but when I get up in the morning and I'm getting ready to go, I get my coffee and I do my thing and then I go take a shower and then I'm like, okay, it's time to start getting dressed. And start, I put my clothes on and I start doing my thing. You know, I moisturize after I wash my face. Um, I don't know about you, but when do you put your shoes on? Uh, right before I walk out the door. Okay, good. A lot of people, when they're getting ready in the morning, they get dressed from head to toe, and then they start working on their face or their hair or whatever they can oh, be. Oh, yeah. So one of the things that a lot of people think of, uh, don't think about is what they're touching before they start doing their makeup, which is why I recommend washing your hands, hands before you start every, every time. time. Okay. If you're the person that gets dressed and puts on their shoes and everything, and you're sitting in front of your makeup counter or whatever the case may be, um, and then you start working on your face and you haven't washed your hands, yuck. Think of what you just put on your face. Yeah, your shoes, right? How many times have you put your shoes on? Like, and I don't know about you, but I'm not dainty when I, I don't like take them by the sides and make sure I put my foot in. Like I'm grabbing the shoe by the bottom of the shoe and I'm putting it on my foot, right? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's really important that you make sure you wash your hands because after you touch your shoes, which have been everywhere, like would you eat anything off the ground, off the, 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 the street that you just walked across? You walked in my classroom. Would you eat anything up no, before my no. classroom? <laughs> She's a special ed teacher, so um, no, I wouldn't eat wow. anything on the floor of your, of your classroom. I'm sorry. Um, point being, <laughs> wash your hands. So it's something that's really, th every time you go to do your makeup, I want you to think about where your feet have been and then wash your hands. All right? So yeah. that's super helpful. All right. So now let's talk a little bit more about the things that are going on our faces. So um, I've asked Dee to bring her makeup kit. Do I get to me? Decide what I take out of it, or am oh, I just? Oh no! I'm gonna. To I'm, you're just gonna hand it over, <laughs> and we're gonna play a little game of keep or toss. And as we're playing the game, I would like for you to play the game too, because I think it's really important for everyone to uh, to go through their bag and see what makes sense. It's probably time for us to to do a little bit of evaluation. And you know what? While we're all doing, while we're all, at home and we're doing our online shopping, this is a great mm -hmm. thing to invest your shopping days on. 
Because it just like with clothes and stuff, I've been ordering like all my new fitness gear so uh-huh. I can be all Zoom Zoom. Yep. As one sports bra comes in, an old one goes out. I think that is a really good rule of thumb, not just for your, uh, not, not just, see, I'm, I'm getting this too. Not just for your makeup, not just for your closet, but for, also for your makeup. If you get more, uh, if you get more makeup, do you really need to hold on to something that's been in your makeup bag for a couple of years? Probably not. So let's, uh, let's see, I need to change this back to the way it was because I'm looking in a funny direction. All right, we're gonna keep working on this, guys. I don't know what's going on. All right, so here we go. So this is, uh, actually, she's got a really big makeup bag, to be honest, but this is the one that, this is the small one that she uses almost on the daily. So we're gonna go through here and see what's inside. I'm scared. I am as well. <laughs> All right, so um, so it looks like we've got a highlighter. Ah, first place we're gonna start. That's only two months old. I bought that right before the world shut down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad that you're okay. So let's so let's let's talk about the first one. The first one is mascara. So D here has the better than sex mascara from Too Faced, um, and. We're just gonna look. We're just gonna take a little look at it's what not this looks like. It's There's great. a little bit of extra on the outside. I'm, I'm kind of. I I'm not me- that messy with my stuff. I like to make sure all of my stuff is always clean, all the time. So anyway, we're gonna take a look at it. Open up your mascara and take a look at the brush. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the brush. First of all, there's a little bit of clumping down at the bottom, but you know what? That's mascara. That's what it does. Second thing we're gonna do. Smell it. I'm gonna smell it. This smells still pretty fresh. Mascara. It's like checking leftovers. <laughs> if it smells funky, don't use it. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm going with this. You also want to check the outside of your uh, mascara bottle. Um, and let's talk about using your mascara. So I know there's a lot of people, I mean, how many times have you watched a movie and you're like, you see somebody who puts the mascara oh, and they pump in it. and they pump it? Mm. Do that not do it. It kills your product. It, does. it dries. First of all, it pushes air into into the container, and then what's in the air? Bugs, germs. Well, I mean, gosh, I hope we're not pushing <laughs> bugs in there. That'd be horrible. But yes, there are germs. There's bacteria, and so what happens is the ca- bacteria loves cool, wet, and dark. They actually love warm, wet, and dark too. Um, but what ends up happening is you end up taking that, pushing the air in pushing the bacteria in there with it, and it's just going to harbor yucky, gross stuff. (laughs) So the reason when I was a teenager that I Uh used to do that Uh was to kind of like mix up the brush. Mm -hmm. Um, This is a little secret of mine. I don't know if you've caught me doing it before, but when I start to do my makeup, I'll I'll take my mascara and I just kind of hold it under my arm (laughs) and I let my body heat melt it. And so when I take it out of the tube, it doesn't, it's not all clumped up and you don't have to pump it a bunch of times. I'm so embarrassed to be admitting that. Look, okay, look, I I am not- it works, it works really good. I'm not gonna hate on that from a personal personal makeup use perspective. I will I will give you that one. However, if you were in my chair (laughs) and you saw me pull pull mascara out from underneath my armpit, that would fire me on the spot. (laughs) All right, let's all just jump off that bridge together, shall we? We're not we're not doing that. But their brushes wouldn't look like my brushes did. I would certainly hope not. Yes, if you're ever in somebody's makeup chair and they do that, run. Run (laughs) far, far away. Do not let them touch your face, just so we're all clear. So anyway, mascara. Mascara is the number one thing that we should be checking at all times, and this is the one thing that we always need to get rid of the fastest. With that said, that's why I usually don't spend a ton of money on mascara. I am not the person, you know, Dior Show is great mascara. Mm-hmm. Too Faced, um, I have not used Too Faced, so I'm going to have to I've just trust. Too Faced for like the last six years. She's I won't six years that she's a loyal customer yeah. to the Too Faced. They own me. Live your life. Um, I personally don't invest a lot of money in my mascara. Um, and I, even in my kit, um, the one that I use is the L'Oreal Venum- Voluminous uh, Carbon Black. I use it both in my, <laughs> Gretchen uses that too. <laughs> Um, uh, yes, it's L'Oreal. It's cheap. Uh, well, I mean, it's not cheap. It's not, it's, it's not Maybelline 
pink and green, which I use that too, by the way. It's appropriately priced for the product that it is. Absolutely. What I'm trying to say is, you know how you go to Costco and you're like, I need mayonnaise. Well, they have two big, huge things of mayonnaise for $5. All right, it may not be that cheap. That's not the point. One thing is, are you going to go through that mayonnaise in the amount of time before it expires? Is it, is it really a deal if you just have to throw away three quarters of it before it expires? No. So that's what I want you to think about when we're talking about purchasing products and what's actually in your kit. How much was that, that ish? I want to say that better than sex is like 20 or 25. Okay. So 20 or $25 for every six months. Mascara, six months. Yeah. This one, it has the, the little label on the bottom. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Yes. Mascara, six months. If it's worth it to you and you have the budget to spend $25 on mascara every six months, live your life. Do what you like. If you want to get that Tom Ford mascara that's like 40 bucks a tube, is it worth it for, four, for six months? Not to me, but to you it might be. Think about that when you're purchasing your products. Dee made a really good point. Um, she, she said on the bottom of the mascara, there is a little, there's a little symbol. And actually, I'm going to show you guys. Like this. It's like a little colored picture. Yeah. And it's like an open-lidded jar like yep. that. Just like that. And it's going to have a number in it. And on this one, my God, this is so it's tiny. Six. I know. I had this one says, six. it says 6 six M. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's teeny tiny, but it's right there at the bottom. Okay. On this one, I have my Heels Ultra Facial Cream. On the back of this one, it says, oh. oops, 12 M. 12 months, and that is for your, I actually wrote down all the different ones that we need to know. Uh, for This one is for moisturizer. This one's only 12 months. On other moisturizers that come in a tube that kind of come like this, this one's actually a cleanser. Um, this one also is 12 months from this particular company. And it depends on the ingredients that are inside. If you use a lot of all natural ingredients, mm -hmm. what happens to fruit when you leave it out on the counter for three months? Ah. Again, sixth grade science experiment. Right? Because because things expire, especially when yeah. they're all natural. We want to make sure that the products that we're using are still good for our face. And things happen. Acids erode, um, like in citrus types product, mm -hmm. citrus, citrus type products, um, things that are, have a more of a cream base that are um, plant-based, sometimes they end up uh, turning, so they actually get bad. So that's what we were talking and about. And I also noticed a lot of the natural products, um, like with lotions and things, if they're fragranced with like the essential oils and stuff, that will drastically fade over time. So if you open your lotion and like all you're smelling is lanolin. Hmm. And if you don't know what lanolin smells like. How it smells like a sheep walking in a field. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a uh, yes. Cindy had a question in regards to that. She says, is that only opened products? What about unopened? Okay. So, well, air sealed? Yeah. So technically, it's from the moment that you buy it. So who knows how long it's been sitting on the shelf? Technically, they're supposed to, there are, on a lot of products, and, and actually, this is what I was going to look up, but I didn't get a chance to. On a lot of products on the bottom of your product, there's usually a number that's part of the serial number, usually somewhere oh, in that barcode. Um, those numbers usually have some, it's like the last three, I can't remember what it is. I'm going to have to look that up and get back to you guys on it, because um, that was something I was going to do, but I didn't. Um, but the, it does usually have some, uh, some kind of reference to when the product was actually made. And the retailers that you're purchasing your makeup from are supposed to be looking through those to make sure that they're not selling anything that that's is already that is already expired. Um, that's why it's also really important that when you're purchasing your products, purchase them from someone that you trust. Um, my favorite go-to places to buy, especially things um, here in Los Angeles, um, I love me some Nigel Beauty. Nigel Beauty, they're up in North Hollywood. Uh, around the corner or down the street from them is Friends Beauty. It's F-R-E-N-D-S, not no I. Um, and the other place that's up there um, is Nanies. Um, I Nanies is at the bottom of my list. It might be at the top of some of your lists. You might have seen um, a lot of celebrities like to shop in there. Um, I personally, I don't like their store. I just, I just don't like the layout of the store. Um, and I've had a couple issues with customer service over the years. 
but at the same time, they carry a lot of makeup brands. Um, I like Nigel's personally because I like the layout of the store. The, the folks that work there, they're, um, they do stuff for production. So it's not just like, I'm a makeup shop. No, they're, they're, they're serving the professional public. Um, and the other one, Friends, does the same. I, I, I just prefer Nigel's and the way their layout is set up. Um, and again, the people that work there, they all know what they're talking about. I, I never walk in there thinking to myself, well, I'm going to have to just serve myself because I know more than everybody else here. I know th those folks are really stuff. helpful and they know their stuff. So purchase from places you trust. Amazon, uh, Amazon can be problematic because you don't actually get to see the product that you're actually purchasing in hand until it's in your hand. Um, a lot of times they'll sell things that are fired. Um, that's why you're getting such a good deal on them. They've been in a storage facility. They may have been in a place that's not um, climate controlled. Some things can't be exposed to extreme heat. Some things can't be exposed to extreme cold. It's important that you're buying from people that you trust because your dollars are going into your face, literally. Where are you going to spend your dollars? So basically, if it seems like too good of a deal to be good, it's not. It may not. May not. Let's okay. put it that way. Because I don't know. I don't know who's out selling stuff. So anyway, the point being is, yes, take a look to see on the back. It should be 12 months from the moment that you open your product. Okay? Hope that's a good little rule of thumb. Um, in this one, I this particular cream, I love Misa. I'm a Kiehl's fan. I think anybody who's been on my things before um, have all seen mm -hmm. that I'm a big fan of Kiehl's. Um, I'm a convert. Things that you actually have to touch with your fingers be extra careful about this one i i'm literally almost to the end of this particular little thing because um this it's like liquid gold to me um but if you're putting your fingers inside of this container everything that's on your hands which we're washing our hands but you know hey sometimes things happen everything that's on your hands is now going into this container and then i'm sealing it up and then putting it away so please make sure that you're, you're being very considerate about the things that you're actually putting your fingers into. Um, if you have something that's like a tube or has a pump like this one, um, this, who, this one, P.S. I pulled this one out on purpose because this one actually does have an expiration date. This one you're is gonna sitting. Throw something away too. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, I've been, I've been holding on to this one on purpose. If you can see here, this one has uh, an expiration date of, 2017. Oh. <laughs> so Denise gets to throw away something today too. You got one thing. I got I got one thing. I dug deep for this one you guys. Thanks. Um and and don't get me wrong, this one this one cost me a pretty penny, but um I, I think it was almost at the end of it anyway, which is probably how it ended up at the bottom of a drawer somewhere. Um please remember that like yeah, you might look at it and go, "Yeah, this is fine." This goes on your eyes. Mm -hmm. Your eyes are precious. You can't get more. Please don't put anything that's no. super expired or that is going to be yucky on your eyes. That's why we talk about mascara so much. That's why it's always the number one thing because we're talking about our mascara. We put it on our eyes and then you get yourself some pink eye and that is not a fun thing. Um, even worse, you could go blind. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's not worth it. Not worth it to save $7 to go get a new mascara or, or a cream of some kind. So this one, trash. I'll buy to that one. Um, the other ones that I pulled out, um, I have, this one is a, a, this is from Stila. This is a cream based shadow. And on this one, I don't think it has Oh, it does. This one. On this one, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm trying to get it in the right light. That one is also 12 months. All right? 12 months. Why? It's a cream product. The applicator comes out, just like on your mascara. The applicator comes out. It's exposed to the air. You're pushing air back in. You're applying it to your eyelids. Do not keep this for more than 12 months. Okay? Again, it's that cream, anything that's cream is going to harbor more bacteria than anything that's powder every single time. Um, something else that, that we probably don't think about that you actually should um, is your eyelash glue, okay? Eyelash glue comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Um, the, the one that I use most often is the one that's in the tube, the Duo uh, Momentito. Um, I have it over here, here it is. <clears throat> Okay, so this one is the two, the regular tube of Duo here. 
And on the back, this one has 24 months. You can see it right there kind of in the middle. Uh, 24 months, two years. You can hold on to it from two years. And the reason being is because it's all inside its own container. And when you take everything off, or when you take the cap off, you actually squeeze it out onto your hands or onto a pallet or whatever the case may be. So it's, it's inside its own container. I'm not putting anything inside. I'm actually putting it on the outside. However, something that's also important to remember is that if you're putting it on your hand, what am I doing? I'm actually touching the tip of the container to my hand. So anything that's on my hand is going to be touching the top of the container. Keep that in mind. If I'm doing this on my hands, I'm, this, this bacteria is my bacteria, okay? I don't wanna be using that on somebody else. So when I'm doing this on other people, in most cases, um, unless I have one that's specifically for them, I'll put this onto a palette and then apply the glue to the palette and then kind of go through that. That's, that's more sanitation, okay? Um, however, I'm gonna take this off real quick. I've got all this stuff all over my hands. <laughs> We're getting messy over here, you guys. <laughs> Part of, part of being a makeup artist. All right, uh, take that off real quick. Um, on this one, this is the uh, duo non-latex version, which I also really like to use. I use. When I use this, I usually get one specifically for a client so that this, is, this belongs to them. I'm not gonna use it on anybody else. Um, in this case, this one is, wow, that is so teeny tiny. What is that, Hold on. is that 12? I think it's 12. Yeah, that's a 12. Okay, good so lord. Is, you guys might actually be able to see it better because <laughs> of the camera. So yeah, this one is a 12. And the reason being is because this one has uh, its brush. own applicator that goes back into the container. Oh. <laughs> it just dropped a little bit out. Um, it goes back into the container. So again, 12 months, super important. Throw it away after 12 months. Good solid year. So um, lipstick, let's talk about some lipstick. Um, I happen to have this one as a good example. I love this beautiful pink, gorgeous color. This is the, uh, this is from MAC. They came out, they have a series of long wear. Yeah, this one's a long wear and the, the color on this one is love forever. Um, and it's a nice like matte color. But here's, here's the problem with this one. Wait, did it do it? Oh, it's not gonna do it now. Oh, it falls out? It falls it out. It falls out, it broke. And the problem is, is that it, well, <laughs> okay, I tested this earlier and the, it, it did not do what it was supposed to do. It was chalky instead of, oh, it was like dried out. It's a little bit dried out, it's chalky. And it had been sitting in the container so long that when I opened it up, that this actually it stopped. Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, that's problematic. Can, I've probably can we have a moment of silence for fallen product. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little silly, silly doing that, but yes. <laughs> All right, that was enough. Anyway, um, point being is uh, with your lipstick, you always want to check to see if it's the consistency that you purchased it at. Okay, if it's super dry or super sticky, let it go. Probably not doing its job anymore. Um, lipsticks can usually last up to two years. Uh, they're made to last up to two years. Um, if you want to, because it, remember what, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if I actually said this specifically, but anything that's cream is going to be more harboring for bacteria. Mm -hmm. Powders are a lot less bacteria driven. You can hold on to powders a lot longer mm -hmm. than you can hold on to anything that's cream based. So if you're putting this on your mouth, which is also a harbinger for bacteria, yes. Um, two years is the absolute max. A lot of people will take, um, take alcohol and spray um, on top of it so that you can just kind of get the, um, the surface bacteria. It, it does work to a certain degree. Um, would I go into a makeup store and trust them to actually slice off the top and alcohol and make sure that nobody else has touched any other part of that and put that on my lips? No. No, I'd rather die in a fire. I say nay nay. I say nay nay. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, do not, P.S., by the way, do not ever try lipstick on in the store. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell you guys that right now. You live your life. Take, it's, but, it, but today, and especially in today's life, mm -mm, uh, no way. Uh, you couldn't catch no. me doing it. Um, smell it. 
Normally, MAC smells like vanilla. They're, they put a specific scent in all of their colors. Normally, it smells like vanilla. It almost smells like cake. Does this smell like cake? It says cake. Very, very faintly. Yes. It's and not, it's not it's barely noticeable. Mm -mm. It doesn't, it doesn't have, a, and it's actually started to turn because it doesn't smell like the sweet vanilla cake smell that they normally have. So this one, the toss, we're tossing it. We don't want to uh, ruin anything else. So now I know we've got a, a couple minutes left. I wanna talk a little bit about uh, your foundations and concealers. Uh, foundation and concealer, at the very most, you should have, uh, you should keep them for a year. Um, the reason being, let's look in your makeup, where's your makeup bag? Over there. Do we have any of your foundations in here? I only use powder now. Ah, she switched over from cream to powder. It's, the, cool. it's the black Sephora one. Just, just go and dig for it for me. Um, you gotta look for, oh, not, um, I wanna look for, uh, we're gonna talk about the, the cream-based, uh, water-based. No, I want the, the, the goo. If you have foundation, if it's separated, I don't have foundation that's separated. I have highlighter that's questionable. Okay. First of all, I just, I just can you? <laughs> no, you're not supposed to show up. I'm shaming you right now. I just want everyone to take a look at this nightmare of a bottle. What happened to this sad thing? This looks like somebody got a, this looks like a Buddy. dog got a hold of it. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Buddy. You. And I love it so much. I'm going to throw it away. Say goodbye. Yeah. Say goodbye. <laughs> I'll give you a moment. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, just for the simple fact <laughs> that this was in a dog's mouth, yeah. you are never <laughs> allowed to use this again. <laughs> this is this is going away. Um, because how long has it been since Buddy's been gone? Buddy passed away in August. Very sad. We miss Buddy a lot. This is going away. <laughs> it's, that's been, that's what that's eight months. Eight months. Okay. So yeah, that's a, that's a hard no. Foundation, concealer, if there's separation, if it looks like one side is oily and one side is cream, um, there are some, there are some very few exceptions when you can just shake that up and it's all fine. More likely than not, if it's been sitting that long and it's had that long to separate, probably time to get rid of it. Oh, glitter. This? Glitter. Glitter is a powder. Okay. Okay. Secondly, glitter is evil. I hardly ever use glitter <laughs> unless I have to. It is the herpes of the arts and makeup world, and I hate glitter. Me and <laughs> Gretchen, you're cracking me up. <laughs> me and Gretchen, we're on it. Um, but if you like glitter, if you love glitter, love it. live your life. Um, I'm scared to ask about this. Ah, this is actually a really good one. Okay, so... Oh, girl. I know. I okay, know. your tools. You should be cleaning and sanitizing your tools. A lot of the time, uh, most of the time when you order a, an eyelash curler, okay, first of all, it's near your eyes, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Super important that we keep anything that comes near our eyes super clean. Um, what ends up happening is this, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm taking it apart. I, mm -hmm. There's a little pad on here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is the, the little pad that goes underneath that helps you curl your eyes. Um, this is usually a silicone pad. Sometimes it's made of, uh, of rubber. Oh, um, or a little foamy kind of fabric, but it's usually like a rubber or silicone. Um, they usually give you replacement pads for mm -hmm. a reason. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I buy the little packs of the replacement mm -hmm. pads. Uh -huh. So you should be replacing those every six months. Secondly, you should also be wiping these down. You can wash it with soap and water, and you can also spray it with 70% alcohol. Okay. The whole thing, the whole, all of this area, because this, if you look here, somebody has been curling their eyelashes with mascara on, and so there's mascara in here. How old do you think that mascara is? How, when was the last time you cleaned this? How long have you had this? A couple of years, at least. I don't say goodbye. <laughs> say goodbye. We're gonna order a new one for you today. This one is going in the trash. We are not saving that because it's been too much damage over too much time, and I don't want you to get eye infection. What do you got here? Horrors no more. That's primer. <laughs> Killing me. Okay, so this from Dr. P.S. by the way, this is a really great primer uh, from Dr. Love Brandt. that primer. Um, how long have you had this? It's a couple years. A couple of years. So this actually What does this say? On the back. 
12 months. What does it say? It says 12 months. Right there. It says 12, 12 months. 12 so months. this brings us to what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So I bought the full size product because I wanted to get the most bang for my buck. And in buying the full size product, if I feel in the tube, there's probably about a third of this tube that I'm going to be throwing away. So if I would have bought the smaller size product, even though price per ounce, it was more expensive, I, in the long run, I'm probably saving more money, so I won't be getting the big products. Oh, I, I just saw um, a, a question in the chat uh, that had to do with foundation a yeah. little bit back from Barbara. She said, yeah. I would like to know what kind of base slash foundation is best to use for stage these days. Oh, okay. So uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago when we were talking mm -hmm. about our uh, stage makeup. Um, I am a big fan of using stage. Uh, okay, uh, no, the uh, I'm trying the, the word I'm uh, ah yes uh, products that are actually made for stage and theater. So I am a big fan of Ben Nye. Um, I like their Studio Series. I think it's really great. There, it's higher pigmented and it's got a wax base. Um, the other one that has some really good products is Meron, M-E-H-R-O-N. Uh, Kryolan also has um, some bits and pieces, um, but I'm a big fan of Ben Nye. Ben Nye has been doing it since back in the day. I mean, Ben Nye did, uh, he actually worked on Frankenstein. I mean, talk about going back all the way and they created their own line. Um, they, have, uh, they have foundation that's in it, a little pot. They also have the stick foundations. Um, Graftobian also has a pretty decent line. I just found one of those replacement pads. Can I have the curly? No, <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, do you see that? No. Oh, but it's an insulting. It's I'm going to withdraw. Rusty. It's rusty. No, we not putting that. I'm not getting you tetanus in your <laughs> eyes, <laughs> guys. Come on. So no, the okay. answer is no. Anyway, so yes, uh, for stage, you're gonna probably wanna use something that's gonna be made for stage specifically because it's gonna have a higher pigmentation. It's actually created to last longer and to set up underneath the lights because we all know the moment you hit that stage, it doesn't matter how gorgeous you look in the dressing room. When you get on the stage, how much heat are you taking on that will melt your stuff right off? We don't wanna be using street stuff. Um, I call, I, I'll call all the other makeup street makeup. It's not street makeup. It's just daytime, regular, mm -hmm. everyday makeup. Um, higher pigmentation, uh, different wax base is probably your best bet. Um, lastly, so we've talked about lips, we've talked about uh, foundation, uh, powders. Again, let's, uh, let's go over powder real quick. Powders do not harbor bacteria in the same way. Um, I personally feel that like powder foundation is a little bit different story because it actually does have a little bit of uh, emollium, uh, emollient bases in it, even though it's a powder base, but it mm -hmm. has to have something to stick. Um, so you're going to have different dates on that one. The I have one here. Yeah. I have the Makeup Forever Pro Finish Powder Foundation. Uh, this one has 24 months, if you can see right there, 24 months. And the reason being is because, like I said, this particular powder is, is a uh, foundation. And so it's going to have a little it's not necessarily cream, but it actually has a little teeny bit of a cream base to it so that it sticks to your face. Um, regular, pound, uh, regular, regular powders like your blush or your eyeshadows, um, they're going to last a lot longer, two to three years. You can actually keep those. Um, depending on how you treat your products, you can actually keep them a little bit longer, but the recommendation is two to three years. Um, how else can you sanitize powder? I have seen, what, what would you could you do a quick spray with your 70% that you keep in your little stash? Now, some people would say, yeah, that's what I like to do. I do that to the containers, but not to the powder. Do you know why? Does it alter like how the product works? Okay. Yep. You use alcohol, it's going to dry out the powder. So what can you do to sanitize your powder products or any of, any of your products for the most part? Psych knows. I don't know. Put them in the freezer. Oh, yeah. The freezing temperatures kill the bacteria. Okay. Pop those bad boys in the freezer overnight, you're in good shape. Does that work for things like concealer? Is that going to make my concealer not usable? Not necessarily. As long as it's something that, as long as the, the product says you can expose, as long as it doesn't say cannot be exposed to cold temperatures, you can put it in the freezer. Okay. Um, we want to avoid putting it in the freezer for days and days and days. We don't want it to crack and get all weird. Um, and you don't want freezer burn. We don't want freezer burn. 
Um, but you can put it in for overnight and that's maybe a little flash freeze. So that will help to decontaminate any products that you have. One thing Denise, is, um, you yeah, are incredible. I'm so sorry to cut you off, but we have to now wrap up for the next yeah. class. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this was amazing. Like, Denise, if you saw my, my I was telling you, if you saw Your my, next question. <laughs> but no, this is so helpful. Now I'm going to go through mine and just, I, I'm going to have to buy new makeup. It's like a whole new makeup bag, basically. Not, <laughs> I think it's a lot. <laughs> yes, basically, yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing this. I can't wait for next time. And yeah. um, thank you everybody for joining us. Please follow Denise on her Instagram. Uh, I think I put it in the feed, but it is at Denise Paxton official. Um, so you can follow her there and uh, check back with us. We have another class coming at 3 p.m. with Lisa Loeb. Uh, and thank you so much. Keep spreading the word. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We love you guys. All Thanks. right, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.